for many AutoCAD users, a line is a command which just should be avoided at all costs. In fact, in the AutoCAD LT version, it doesn't even, it even appear in the ribbon. Although you can actually still use it if you want to, but you just have to type it in the command line. How is it with you? In this video, I'd like to show you how to use it in three different ways. Firstly, to simply align one object against another. Secondly, how to use it to rotate and scale a PDF. And thirdly, how to use a line to precisely divide, define a rotation function. Enjoy. So I'm now in the home register and we find a line in our modify command group. Just down here, I'll fix it there. There it is, a line. To call it out, I'll just click on the button select my object, enter, first source point, so the first point which is going to be moved, so where should this be moved to? I'll say perpendicular to the line, second source point, the end point here, also perpendicular to the line. We're asked for a third source point, but that's only necessary if we're wanting to do something in three dimensions, and we're just working in 2D here, so we can just enter to continue, and then we're asked, do we want to scale our objects? Nope, we just want to align them, so I can just enter once more. And there we have it. Hey presto, our object has been aligned. It really is that simple. The second thing I want to do is to show how we can align and scale a PDF which we're going to use as a sort of background picture. It could be that you have a plan or an aerial view the same thing can be done with photographs or basically anything which you can attach to the drawing. I'm going to use a PDF because that's a little bit easier because PDFs as a, an attachment also have object snap points, which makes the whole thing easier. When it comes to pictures, so anything with pixels, then you have to sort of guesstimate the various points. Okay, let's go to insert, attach. I have here a relevant PDF already there. I'm going to open that. Insertion points specify on screen and I'm going to scale on screen as well. Okay, I'll just put it here and just sort of according to how it looks, I'm going to scale it. That looks fine. Now I have here a wall with length 6,000 millimeters. I also have 6,000 meters here, not 6,000 meters, 6,000 millimeters. I can measure that to prove it. There you go. 6,000 millimeters. So basically this wall should go here. That's the interior face is 6 meters. This is 6 meters. At the moment this is actually, if I measure it from there, whoops, to there, is not yet 6 meters. Um, and I can't be bothered to work out a scale. I don't need to. All I do is say align this object my starting point will be the end point here and my first destination point will be there I just relate this to the relevant point here so I go from there to there and from there to there third source point we don't need because we're in two dimensions still but when it comes to the question scale objects based on alignment points I say yes please and hey presto I have my PDF turned and scaled or rotated and scaled exactly as I want. Just a word of warning, when it comes to PDFs, I'm going to just erase our original rectangle here and measure the in, inner face of the wall from there to there. It should be six meters and it is. If I measure in the other direction though, measure from there to there. It actually says 3,999 and a few decimal points. Usually that's not a problem. We can just ignore that. A half millimeter every four meters is something that most of us can live with if we're just using it as a basis for other things which we're going to draw exactly. But it's just something to keep in mind not that you're then confused right at the end when you find that some things don't fit which should even though the difference is a matter of a few tenths of a millimeter. Okay that's basically the second use. 
for aligning to scale and rotate objects which previously had an unknown size. Now the third one is to rotate an object in a very precise way related to another object. Now I've taken an example because we're all familiar with doors and how doors turn and also turning points are called hinges usually when it comes to doors. In actual fact if I wanted to draw this door in a you know as open as it could be so that it actually comes against the corner of this this post here I would just use a, a rotate function around the hinge and just sort of according to my estimation say uh, it's about there. And in actual fact if I'm wanting to know for example yeah what is the opening across here so from there to there if it's a fire door or something I can measure it and I'm probably accurate within a few tenths of a millimeter which for this particular purpose is enough if I actually measure the distance of error yeah we're in this sort of tenths if not hundredths of millimeters error which is something that we could usually live with it's a, probably the thickness of the paint on the post but it could be that you're we're wanting to define some kind of a, a rotation motion precisely if we're designing a clock or, or something where things are really accurate so let's just go back a couple of steps there I have my door is closed we can use the align function for this particular process I just need a circle as a, a reference object and I basically describe with a circle the movement of the door onto the post so the center of the circle is here middle of my hinge of course the center of the hinge and it goes through the point where the door actually comes against something and then I can use my align function to turn the door for rotation of course our source point and our first destination point are the same points and for the second we take the intersection here and the intersection here we're still in 2D so we don't need a 3D point so enter we don't want to scale enter and then when I look here we will actually see it's easier if I take that away we will actually see as much as I zoom that there's no error here at all so that's a line a very simple rotation movement scale and turn and rotate something precisely according to some geometric definition. So that was it for just now but if you'd like to make any comments about the video or you have indeed any questions about this or any other videos feel free to write the, the comments in at the bottom below the video or you can contact me directly over my website the information for that will appear roughly about now but also at the end of the video you will find a link where you can just click on it and you'll come straight to my website. You'll also find a link to subscribe to my channel and I can sincerely recommend that because then in this way you can keep in touch with developments in AutoCAD, different subjects which I will deal with as I upload videos from time to time. So thanks very much for watching and see you soon.